Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to dive into an important topic that affects both children and adults, chickenpox. If you've ever had chickenpox or know someone who has, you'll want to stick around to learn more about its causes, symptoms, and treatment options. Let's get started. What is chickenpox? Chickenpox, also known as varicella, is a highly contagious viral infection caused by the varicella zoster virus. It primarily affects children but can also affect adults who have not been vaccinated or previously exposed to the virus. Brief History of Chickenpox The earliest recorded evidence of chickenpox dates back to ancient times. The disease was described in medical writings from ancient Greece, such as those by the renowned physician Hippocrates. The first notable documentation of chickenpox as a distinct disease came in the 16th century. An Italian physician, Giovanni Filippo, provided a detailed clinical description of chickenpox in his writings. Significant contribution during 17th and 18th centuries was made by the English physician Richard Morton, who provided further clinical descriptions of chickenpox in his medical writings. In 1954, the varicella zoster virus responsible for chickenpox was isolated and identified by the Japanese researcher Michiaki Takahashi. This breakthrough paved the way for further research and vaccine development. The development of the chickenpox vaccine marked a major milestone in the history of the disease. The first varicella vaccine was licensed for use in Japan in 1986, followed by the introduction of vaccines in other countries, leading to a significant reduction in chickenpox cases. Today, chickenpox remains a common childhood illness in many parts of the world, although its incidence has decreased significantly in regions with high vaccination rates. About Causal Agent of Chickenpox The chickenpox virus, scientifically known as the varicella zoster virus VZV, belongs to the herpesviridae family. The varicella zoster virus is an enveloped virus, which is derived from the host cell's membrane during the viral replication process. Inside the envelope, Varicella zoster virus contains an icosahedral capsid, which is a protein shell. The capsid encloses the viral genetic material and plays a vital role in protecting it during transmission and infection. The viral genome of varicella zoster virus consists of a double-stranded DNA molecule. This DNA carries all the necessary genetic information required for the replication and assembly of new viral particles. Viral envelope consists of glycoprotein spikes, which are essential for the virus's attachment and entry into host cells. The size of the varicella zoster virus particles ranges from approximately 150 to 200 nanometers in diameter. How Chickenpox Transmitted Chickenpox, or varicella, is a highly contagious viral disease. Its primary modes of transmission include Airborne transmission the varicella zoster virus can be transmitted through respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks. The virus can remain suspended in the air and can be inhaled by nearby individuals, leading to infection. Direct contact. Chickenpox can also be transmitted through direct contact with the fluid from the blisters of an infected person. Touching the fluid-filled blisters or virus-contaminated surfaces can result in transmission. Highly contagious in nature. Chickenpox is highly contagious, and even a brief exposure to an infected person can result in transmission. It is more common among children, but adults can also contract the virus if they have not had it before or have not been vaccinated. Pathogenicity of chickenpox. It refers to the ability of the varicella zoster virus to cause disease and the mechanisms by which it infects and spreads within the human body. Pathogenicity of chickenpox include Entry of virus Chickenpox begins with the entry of the varicella zoster virus into the respiratory system through inhalation of respiratory droplets containing the virus. The virus then attaches to the respiratory epithelial cells and enters them, establishing the initial infection in the respiratory tract. Replication and spread. After entering the respiratory epithelial cells, varicella zoster virus starts replicating and spreads to regional lymph nodes. From the lymph nodes, the virus disseminates to various organs and tissues throughout the body via the bloodstream. This widespread dissemination allows the virus to infect the skin and mucous membranes. Skin lesions. Chickenpox is characterized by the development of a rash composed of itchy red papules that progress to fluid-filled vesicles and eventually form scabs. The virus infects the skin cells, causing cell death and the formation of these characteristic skin lesions. The skin lesions are highly contagious and can release viral particles, contributing to the spread of the virus to others. Latency and reactivation. After the initial infection, varicella zoster virus can establish a latent infection in sensory nerve ganglia. 
The virus remains dormant in these nerve cells and can reactivate later in life, causing a different condition called shingles, herpes zoster. Complications. While chickenpox is usually a self-limiting disease, sometime it can lead to complications which may include bacterial skin infections, pneumonia and encephalitis. What are the symptoms of chickenpox? The symptoms of chickenpox develop within 10 to 21 days after exposure to the virus. Symptoms of chickenpox include Rash The hallmark symptom of chickenpox is the appearance of a rash. It typically starts as red, itchy spots, papules, on the skin, which then progress to fluid-filled blisters, vesicles. These blisters can be found all over the body, including the face, scalp, trunk, limbs, and even inside the mouth, nose, and ears. Itching. The rash caused by chickenpox can be intensely itchy. Scratching the blisters can lead to the risk of bacterial infection and scarring, so it's important to avoid scratching as much as possible. Fever. Many individuals with chickenpox experience a mild to moderate fever, often ranging from 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit to 102.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Fatigue and general discomfort. Chickenpox can cause general discomfort, fatigue, and a feeling of unwellness. These symptoms may be more prominent in adults or individuals with weakened immune systems. Headache. Headaches are commonly reported during a chickenpox infection, often accompanied by general body aches. Loss of appetite. Many people with chickenpox experience a reduced appetite or loss of interest in food. This is especially common in children. Respiratory symptoms. In some cases, individuals with chickenpox may experience mild respiratory symptoms, such as a runny or congested nose, sneezing, or a cough. How to diagnose chickenpox. Diagnosing of chickenpox include Physical examination. A healthcare professional will look for clusters of red spots that progress to fluid-filled blisters at various stages of development. The distribution of the rash on the body and the presence of other disease-related symptoms can help confirm the diagnosis. Medical history. The healthcare professional may ask about symptoms, recent exposure to individuals with chickenpox, and immunization history. Viral culture. A sample of fluid from the blisters may be collected and sent to a laboratory for viral culture. This test helps identify the varicella zoster virus. Polymerase chain reaction. PCR testing can detect the presence of viral DNA or genetic material in a sample, such as fluid from the blisters or respiratory secretions. Serologic testing. Blood tests can measure the presence of antibodies specific to the varicella zoster virus. What is the treatment for chickenpox? Most cases of chickenpox resolve on their own without specific medical treatment. However, here are some common approaches used for managing chickenpox which include Symptom relief Over-the-counter medications such as paracetamol can help reduce fever, relieve pain, and alleviate itching associated with chickenpox. Calamine lotion Applying calamine lotion or using cool compresses can soothe itching and help dry out the blisters. Antiviral medications In certain cases, antiviral medications may be prescribed, especially for individuals at high risk of complications. Antivirals such as acyclovir, valacyclovir, or famcyclovir can help shorten the duration of the illness and reduce the severity of symptoms. Oral antihistamines. Antihistamines can help relieve itching and promote better sleep, particularly during nighttime when itching tends to worsen. However, they should be used under medical supervision. Preventing secondary bacterial infections. Scratching the itchy blisters can lead to bacterial superinfections. To prevent this, keeping the skin clean and nails short is important. Isolation and rest. Chickenpox is highly contagious, so individuals with the infection should stay home until recovery. Resting and avoiding exertion can help the body recover. How to prevent chickenpox. Primary methods for preventing chickenpox include Vaccination. The most effective way to prevent chickenpox is through vaccination. The varicella vaccine is routinely recommended for children and adults who have not had chickenpox before or have not been vaccinated. Vaccination is particularly important for individuals at higher risk of severe complications, such as newborns, pregnant women who are not immune to chickenpox, and individuals with weakened immune systems. Vaccination significantly reduces the severity of the disease if infection occurs. Vaccination also helps prevent complications and the transmission of the virus to others. Avoiding close contact. Limiting close contact with individuals who have chickenpox is essential to prevent the spread of the virus. If someone in the household has chickenpox, try to isolate them from others, especially individuals who are not immune. 
Good Hygiene Practices Practicing good hygiene can help reduce the risk of infection. Encourage frequent hand washing with soap and water. Avoid touching or scratching the rash, as this can lead to the spread of the virus and increase the risk of complications. Covering the mouth and nose. Encourage individuals with chickenpox to cover their mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing to minimize the release of respiratory droplets containing the virus. Exclusion from school or work. Individuals with chickenpox should stay home from school, childcare, or work. This helps prevent the spread of the virus to others. Conclusion. Remember, if you or someone you know has chickenpox, it's crucial to isolate yourself or your child to prevent the virus from spreading. It's a good idea to stay home from school or work until the blisters have scabbed over and are no longer contagious. That's all for today's video on understanding chickenpox. We hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. Stay safe and take care.